of user or IC utility involves government employees, out of studio operatives, and teachers from the different secondary and elementary schools. This is a continuing computer literacy program started in the year 2000. The program is in information, computer operation, server utilization, and government. The following software is the focus of the training basic operation of computer, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint presentation, Microsoft Excel, global shooting, user image editing, speech editing. Finally, the objective of the aim is to assess the computer literacy extension program of yes, information technology on our campus for school year 2007 to 2010. Specifically, we have a computer literacy background of this content and impact of the computer literacy extension program. The methods we learn, research, numerators, two net questionnaires for the different secondary and cooperatives who are recipient of the computer literacy programs of, of PS Information Com Department of Ohio State College. The data I, I've already typed in the question map. It says, you have said whether there is a problem on technology for farmers. Are there instances that farmers, especially the old ones, reject new technology and stick to what they are used to? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm reading your question. Yes, ma'am. What particular agricultural? Extension program of the VS Information Technology Department at an overall mean of 4.24. This implies that the respondents were very much agreed on the effect of trainings and seminars conducted by the VS Information Technology. As to personal skills assessment, as can be seen from the table, the respondents rated their personal skills on word processing using word. Ayo din. Hello? Mayo. Yes.
and at our venue we are church is there From this classroom and event in the delivery of care, subject matter and other activities like creating modules, making test paper questions and reports. Especially that other officers requires online submission of their reports and registration of pupils and students. The extension program of the BS Information Technology or the computer or ICT literacy involves government employees, out of school youths, cooperatives, and dependent teachers. This is a continuing computer literacy. The objective of this program is to increase the level of knowledge and computer operations or utilization among the participants. The following software is the focus of the training is computer, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint presentation, Microsoft Excel, troubleshooting, internet literacy, image editing, and video editing, and other programs. Generally, the objective of the study aims to assess the computer literacy extension program of BS Information Technology Corner Campus for school year 2017 to 2020. Specifically, the study also determines the computer literacy background of the respondents and impact of the computer literacy extension program of the department. The methods used were the researchers and enumerators floated questionnaires to the different secondary and elementary schools and cooperatives who are recipients of the computer literacy programs of BS Information Department of Apio State College. The data gathering techniques were the main instrument used was when researchers and enumerators personally administer the questionnaire of the respondents in different schools and cooperatives for its 100% retrieval. 100 Frequency count, percentage, and grading was
Okay, there you go, and we are back. Okay, uh, there was a problem our place. So once again, our apology, and thank you for waiting for us. So you know, and having this done out this conversation that we are sending in the community. So we'll go on. We'll go on definitely with our main objective in our thesis for this one. And then obviously we will with my technical team here, Mom Isel will be continuing uh, um, the presentation of, of the papers of Mom Hel is Rodriguez and Mr. Mark or not. This republication of 3.75, 3.72, 3.54, 3.52, 3 and 3.59, respectively. However, respondents disagreed on all skills on open educational resources will be due to its complicated features. Moreover, lack of practice might be one reason why there is still no result on personal assessment other skills despite the various seminars and trainings conducted by VS in information technology departments. This is supported by the study of Omi et al. that the effectiveness of ICT at school depends on actual practice and on their ability to integrate ICT into their teaching process. As for the impact of the computer literacy extension program of the VS information technology, as can be seen from the table, majority of the computer literacy extension program of the DS Information Technology Department have a great impact among the respondents. Among the respondents, this implies that programs of the department are very much needed in the uh, community. Based from the uh, results in this classroom, the researcher concludes that the study shows a computer literacy extension program of the Business Information Technology Department contributed and improved the career professions of respondents, which also increased and motivated respondents to learn more of the use of computer, especially in this time of pandemic, in which face to face is However, lack of practice were the reason why some results of the personal assessment of their skills is still low despite the various seminars and trainings conducted by the department. 
based on the findings of this study, computer literacy extension program of the BS in information technology has a great impact. The stakeholders of the college, uh, continuous monitoring and evaluation will be strongly implemented for the sustainability of the program. That ends my presentation. Good day at GMC. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much to Ma'am Helen S. Rodriguez and Mr. Mark Ornoki Lama for presenting your paper. Now, we just have heard five of our first five presenters about various topics and researchers on education. Our presenters are now ready to answer some queries which you may have relative to the researchers presented. Okay, at this juncture, I would like to request everybody specifically our presenters and the rest of the participants in this session to turn on your camera since this is an open forum. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Ma'am Batayan, I can now see her. Ma'am Briggs. Of course, we have Mr. Pasqua. And then, of course, who else? Mr. Ram, um, um, we have here. Yes. So, sorry for my pronouns. Okay, and just correctly any time. Okay, and we'd like to of course send our apology for the our interruption earlier. So at our place we had our, our interruption. So be clear with us. Uh, as I said, uh, these brownouts are still manifestations that we are still in the communities around now nowadays. Brownouts is just a um drama or if it happens most of the most of the time. Okay. So uh, I believe our uh, researcher is going to answer the query specifically for Amam Batayan, for Ms. Khan, of course, um, for Ma'am Umawin, for Mr. Kapilatasan, for Ma'am Helen, Rodriguez, and if Mr. Ma or Mokulamo is here, he is also ready to answer some of your queries. Now, we, we are still guided by the team for this series. It's actually sustainable food systems and livelihoods, translating your discoveries because of your research, translating discoveries into solutions and applications. So we are guided by a general question. I have a general question, but after giving you the general questions, of course, some of our participants will do some questions if you if you like to. So this one basically will help us learn more and understand and more researches uh, presented to us. Okay, so will that be okay? Can I see you know, a hands up or thumbs up for that? Yes, there you go. So we are guided by this general question for everybody. Now, what was or what were, what was or what were the problems, concerns that you or that your study addressed and what was the solution made? Some of your maybe um, package technology that you use to solve the concern. So basically, that's more the question for the first five percenters, even the succeeding percenters. The questions will definitely be involved in that. What were the problems? Um, what were the problems that led you to, to do your research? And after knowing um, the results of that, and then Maybe that led to a solution to those problems you have had before. So, anyone? Well, let, let's start with the first one, of course. Let's start with Mom. But I am. Go, ma'am. Um, morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, <clears throat> as to my study, uh, this was conducted last year. Um, August 2020, and at the time, um, we are now having the flexible learning. So, uh, <clears throat> the awareness and acceptability of the country, the MGO, and the program was so The um one each holders, particularly the students that are the findings revealed that uh, they are 
the, the, the awareness is still high and the, the acceptability is also high. And that to the, uh, the problem that price there is um, how about the students? So it was recommended that uh, to to make the freshman students aware of the college GMGO and the, the, the program goals and objectives, it was recommended that uh, uh, both of dissemination through social media should be uh, included in the dissemination. With a with a uh, normal now now normal um, what we did is basically making sure of the 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 first um, platforms that we have now uh, to make sure that the freshmen are informed about our PDM job. Is that correct, Ma'am Dyer? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, thank you very much. May I ask the the rest of the members of this particular session? So we have follow up questions for Ma'am Dyer. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You are asking your Yes. Okay. Good morning, ma'am. But I am. I think I'm happy to hear that your, 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 I uh, know, institution have high awareness. Awareness and what is that? Um, Accessibility of the PMGO of your institution. A question What good practices could your university or institution have that led to this high accessibility of the PMGO of, of, your, of your institution? What good practices did you, did you already have that could have led to this high appreciation of your PMGO? Perhaps you can learn from this process. Mm -hmm. um, there were different, uh, there were varied um, channels uh, for in this relation has been conducted. Okay, so among these are well, the top five are uh, the discussions in the class, and then uh, through the, the school publication, and then um, incorporating this PMGO uh, and program goals and objectives in program invitations. So whenever there are program, there are programs. Uh, these were printed and uh, distributed to the participants uh, of uh, these uh, programs and uh, school activities. And also, um, <clears throat> we have these tarpaulins and billboards uh, that were posted in the uh, in the community, starting from the entry point of the municipality, leading to the road networks to the campus of the school. And so that made it um, the awareness of uh, our, our stakeholders uh, high. Okay, there you go. So that means to stay, you know, staying from the gate. Thank you so what's the use uh basis case so that's yes. basically form part of the best practices that you know the apayao we have not from apayao state college it's actually yes, yes. from that we have further question from mambataya okay okay i guess now and how about the, the other participants oh, by the way hello to the people beautiful people of apayao state college Okay, hello from Bicolandia. Okay, that's that basically um, leads us to the next um, next presenter to answer a query. Um, Ma'am Rochella Tran from Ateneo de Nagay University from that, of course. And yes, please do answer the question, the general question. Good morning, good morning, sir. And then, so um, I would like to relate now my study on the sustainable food systems and like use translating public inclusion and application. Mm -hmm. So basically, actually, my study focused on and was limited by the um, core values. So uh -huh. in this time, I related with my because that's also the witness that I discovered. Now, um, it's my thesis 
so then order A, which um, spells out the indicator for for value. Now, food systems will relate to food supply, indicator related to conservation of energy and resources. Yeah. We need to hold our basic, basic education just next before they graduate the actual deal next. But it turns out that uh, the weakness the weakness is there is no direct uh, way that we teach them the values of or not So the basic education is directly telling or um, homing in our students the value for nature and the value for food also. The value for conservation also. So we leave that to the teachers whether they include it in the lesson or not. That's the business. Now, how do we translate it now into um, solutions? Perhaps that's the recommendation. We need to look at the one part, one uh, competency in the curriculum that just tells out the um, value for environment, the conservation of food, and sustainable um, food systems, and that there should be one direct competency there that tells about this matter. So that means so Yes. So uh, thank you for that. So based on what I am understanding is there is no direct path. So what we do based on the curriculum that is actually just an integration. But your concern is really um telling explicitly on the curriculum guide that there should be basically competencies at least one for that. So that's the, the result of of your study, right? No, my 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 follow up is for you is yes. Uh, yes ma so this one leads me to my next question number a follow-up question that have been no direct path. So you're you're telling us there is no direct path um to integrating respect for nature. So um what can you suggest as a course of action that we can actually do to address the concern? Um this is um this will be in the um a, a recommendation to the policy making body and it should reach our it should reach the study should reach um, our the national education um, and um, in one in one presentation I was able to talk to our CID um, for the CID for uh, curriculum curriculum uh, and then for curriculum, for a curriculum, and then they are already doing something about it, and then they are actually they are also putting core values in teaching. But if the core values are not given in the students, there's really no they are not evaluating whether our graduates really are imbued with the the value the nature. So they're doing something about it such that. The, the plans are uh, incorporating the core values in one, one core, uh, in, in emphasizing core value at least in one quarter, uh, one value mm -hmm. for each quarter. That's one scheme that they are thinking. Um, there should be others, but right now there's no order like that yet. Yeah, so but the, the curriculum guides must be um, improved. Okay. Oh. It's quite ironic because we have the options of the following of the like ESP, the like Paris case. We are in EDP, but there is indeed based on the study there was, or there were no data paths eh, in going those mm -hmm. things, right? So thank you for that, ma'am. Okay, we are as a rest of the members of this particular session who are here. I think I'll follow up question from um, Richelle Dahan. Oh, by the way, we have we are also joined by all ten. I think from Spain we have this um Tomoko Adachi from the session. So okay, that's that's one and that I can see. Okay. So I guess now mom mom thank you very much for sharing your insights in your research. Okay, let's do the next.
from four mam jeli o mawe nam are we i guess mam jeli are you with us hello <laughs> yes so she, she's still here so again from payao state college so thank you thank you very much payao state college for actively participating i say at 2021 okay let us proceed maybe she mom um, mowing is having a problem let us proceed to mr randy kabila taza kabila taza okay sir uh, your microphone is muted. Um, Sir Randy, your microphone, please. So that we can hear you. Okay, very good. Yes, sir. Good morning, everyone. And first, uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to present our, our research study. And with regards, the, uh, uh, with regard to the study on assessment of the conducted bookkeeping training program by the FIOC colleagues, uh, the uh, only the uh, only uh, purpose of this study is to come up with or determine rather the gaps and problems. Program because uh, this program is actually um, conducted by the business department from uh, uh, type of time. And of course, we would like also that this program will be enhanced. And so uh, this study came out so that we can determine the gaps and problems during the training program. And actually, the um, assessment is just based on the following level. We concentrated on I, I concentrated on the level of the uh, learner reaction, the learning the behavior, and the results. And actually, that is uh, came from Kerr uh, Patrick's models uh, level of learning and my work efficiency because the respondents are officers actually of the um, uh, organization and they have they are the bookkeepers the site development officers and the treasurers so um they are for your work efficiency and as to the findings the man of the study i can say that uh the man uh, uh, effective or mostly effective of the training program but we can see that there are other areas that we need to improve or enhance for the improvement of this program. And so uh, we also consider the um, recommendations from our stakeholders or the participants so that by the next uh, bookkeeping training program, we have to uh, incorporate this so that this will be enhanced. That's all and thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing, for giving us an uh, overview or words I view of your study conducted. My, my, my follow up question is so basically, definitely, this question will bring you to the very purpose why you did uh, the research. Uh, sir, uh, sir Randy, my question is um, why was there a need for a training program for bookkeepers in your area? Yes, sir. Uh, we need uh, to have this uh, training because um, actually the people's organization, organizations of owner were already uh, uh, being audited. Mm -hmm. being audited. And so we need to be, uh, of course, uh, well versed with um, uh, the, the bookkeeping so that you will know how to prepare your uh, simple financial statement and person uh, bookkeeping uh, program. For 
really the first time for this to be first to practice against such um, trainings. Actually, it's very simple that I bet. Training for the keepers, the keepers, and I. Okay, sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Not yes, we still have a bunch of questions or related questions for Mr. Randy of the Atazan from the, the rest of the participants in this particular session. You are now um, being asked to to pitch your question. Okay, do we have? Okay, I think none. So let's go back to. to to Mom JB. Mom JB, are you with us now? Okay, maybe she is experiencing technical difficulty as well. Okay, now let's proceed to um to the next. Mom Helen Reyes. Yes, sir. About assessment of extension program of the BS information. Yes, ma'am. Please do the honors. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, our study is the assessment of extension program of the DS Information Technology Department. You know. So uh, since uh, in an educational institution, one core, uh, one core function is uh, extension program. Mm -hmm. So our objective here is to assess the effectiveness of the extension program of the department. The coverage is 2017 to 2020. So our program, the activities were for the skills that were conducted are basic operations of office, photo editing, image editing, and, and this uh, recent, we, since we are in the pandemic situation, we conducted uh, some of the uh, platforms that can be used by our uh, clientele or our stakeholders that come up in the, the uh, result and discussion on the applications like OER, Open educational resources, quiz makers, and those three, uh, those latest platforms that can be used were uh, got the mean of uh, um, uh, this agree or uh, with lower mean. Maybe this is new to them, no practice, and they uh, the, the stakeholders were not used or they are not still using it. So maybe, and one uh, we conclude that uh, the this application should be uh, should be continued so that and one with uh, one recommendation also that the program extension program of the department should be continuous uh, implementation, monitoring and evaluation so that we can follow up with these new platforms that can be extended to our stakeholders. So that's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Ma'am Helen, for that, for providing us back from the information. So I believe that the participants of this extension program is actually, are, are basically teachers or are in the field of teaching? Teacher, right? yes. Yes, sir. And government officials or barangay officials sirs, that uh -huh. are in the office work. Yeah, so they definitely they basically got the skills that they need, you know, specifically in the new normal where everything is online. So definitely those yes. platforms you actually introduce are of use to them, correct? Yes, sir. yes sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that. So do we have further questions from Helen? Have you raised your hand, Mom Pan? Do you have a query for Mom Helen? 
So thank you, thank you for all those presenters who share their views and as well as providing us um, necessary information to fully understand the research. Okay, so now let's go back to the paper presenter. So um, after five presenters, then we go uh, back again, or we will definitely have open more. Okay, thank you very much. Now, next in line, we have definitely uh, Mr. Nick John B. Sklar from the Department of Education, Iloilo, Iloilo Science and Technology Philippines, to, to share basically uh, their study on public school teachers community linkages and professional development adherence of the Philippine Professional Center for Teachers. Okay, once again, I give you um, Nick John Solar and also Ma'am Annalie A.S. Cordero. Good day. Today I will present to you our study entitled Public School Teachers, Community Linkages, and Professional Development Adherence on the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers. This is Nick Denny Solar from the Department of Education in the Bureau. And together with me is Anali S. Codero from the Unido Science and Technology University. Teaching is a profession that lies at the heart of both the learning of children and young people and their social, cultural, and economic development. It is social to transmit and elaborate social values such as democracy, equality, tolerance, cultural understanding, and respect for each person's fundamental freedom. The Department of Education created the Department of Order 42 2017 entitled National Adoption and Implementation of the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers or PPSD. The main objective of this DO is to set out clear expectations of teachers along well-defined career stages of professional development from beginning to distinguish practice. To engage teachers to actively embrace a continuing effort in attaining proficiency and apply a uniform measure to assess teachers' performance, identify needs, and provide support for professional development. The same DO reiterated that teachers play a crucial role in nation building for quality teachers the Philippines develop holistic learners who are seeking values equipped with 21st century skills and able to propel the country to development and progress. Further, it stated that this is in consonance with the Department of Education vision of producing Filipinos who passionately love their country, their values and competencies, and enable them to realize their full potential and contribute meaningfully to building the nation. Last, a continued personal and institutional effort is highly recommended to help teachers improve their competence in the profession and eventually the community at large. This paper is inside that each school is among the determine how relevant they are in giving quality education to their learners. Then, they have to focus their attention to their teachers' competency and same study must be conducted. For the objectives, one, what is the level of adherence of teachers that the PPSD has mandated by the DO number 42 2017 in terms of community linkages and professional engagement and personal growth and personal development as a whole and when categorized by school level, sex, age, highest educational attainment, frequency of professional education seminars attended, Sponsoring and giving for seminars and in tenure of service. Two, it's the level of adherence of teachers to the Philippine Professional Standards as mandated by DO number 42 series of 2017 in terms of community linkages and professional engagement and personal growth and personal development. Deeper, significantly, when categorized by school level. of service. 
So for the materials and method research design, descriptive research, the respondents are 137, both elementary and high school public The researcher made questionnaire for the data gathering instrument. The researcher wrote a letter to the school division for the conduct of the study. And for the data analysis procedure, SPSS or statistical package for social sciences were used to, for the data gathering, for the data gathered interpretation. For the result, so this is the level of the experience of teachers to PPSD to take as a whole. So both of them, the personal growth and professional development and community just professional engagement were interpreted as very satisfactory. For personal growth and professional development, it is a meal frequently decided that the community linkages and professional engagement get the meal of the event grouped by age. For personal growth and professional development, highest value of the mean is 4.8 to 18 and is from mature working age 55 to 64 years old, while the lowest value of 3.7 to 7 mean is from prime working age, which is 25 to 54 years old. For the Many linkages and professional engagement. The highest value was taken of the mean was taken from early working age, which is 4.15, while the CEO prime working age get the lowest value of 3.84. All of them were interpreted as very satisfactory. Personal growth and professional development has a p value of 0.004 and interpreted as significant. The same thing with community linkages and professional engagement with a p-value of 0 0.028 interpreted as significant. When grouped by sex, personal growth and professional development and community linkages and professional engagement has higher, highest value in value for female 3.91 and 3.94 respectively, while male get, get the lowest value mean value of 3.59 and 3.70 e respectively. For the key value of personal growth and professional development when group XX is 0 0.040 interpreted as significant, while community linkages and professional engagement get a key value of 0.107 and interpreted to be not significant. When group is school level, professional growth and professional development get the highest value of me in senior high school, which is 4.25, while elementary get the lowest value of 3.84 in terms of the mean. For community linkages and professional engagement, still senior high school get the highest value of mean of 4.23, while senior high school get the lowest mean of 3.83. All of them were interpreted as very satisfactory. For personal growth and professional development, get a p-value of 0.144, while in community linkages and professional engagement, it get the p-value of 0.91, and both of them were interpreted as not significant. When group by educational attainment, bachelor's degree get the highest value in both personal growth and professional development and community linkages and professional engagement. 3.91 and 3.95 mean value respectively, while master's degree get 3.71 and 3.76 mean value for personal growth and professional development and community linkages and professional engagement. Both all of them were represented as very satisfactory. For the P value of personal growth and professional development, development is 0.119, while for community linkages and professional engagement is 
and both of them were interpreted as not significant. Or when group with frequency of attending professional education centers. For teachers with average of one to three seminars every year, get the higher mean or the highest mean of 3.89 in terms of personal growth and professional development, while those teachers have four to five seminars every year get the lowest value of 3.84, respectively. For community linkages and professional engagement, teachers with average of seven and above seminars every year get the highest value or 0 0.9, and the lowest value still was, take, was taken by average of one to three seminars every year, which is 3.88. All of them were interpreted as very satisfactory. Personal growth and professional development get a p-value of 0.819, while community linkages and professional engagement get a p-value of 0.360. Both of them were interpreted as not significant. When group is sponsoring NPP, personal growth and professional development and community linkages and professional engagement considered personal sponsoring NPP as a highest value, mean value of 3.97 and 3.94 respectively, while this decision as sponsoring NPP get the lowest value of 3.84 and 3.83 respectively. The P value for personal and professional development is 0.7 at high nine. And for community linkages and professional engagement, P value is 0 0.870, and both of them were interpreted as not significant. For the year of service, teachers that have the year of service of 21 years and above get the highest value because of personal growth and professional development, which is 3.96. But the teachers with three years and below the year of service get the lowest value of 3.81. Yeah. For community linkages and professional engagement, teachers that has a tenure of service of four to ten years get the highest value of 4.08, while those still teachers to three years and below tenure of service get the lowest value or mean value of 3.76. One of them were interpreted as very satisfactory. In terms of the value of the near service, personal growth and professional development get a p-value of 0.655, while community linkages and professional engagement get a p-value of 0.156, and both of them were interpreted as not significant. For the conclusion, one, the level of adherence of public schools, both elementary and high school teachers, is found to be very satisfactory of the domains of EPSD. And the teachers are very strong in community linkages and professional engagement, followed by the use of teachers for personal growth and professional development, though all of the two domains are verbally interpreted as very satisfactory. Two, there is a significant difference in the level of achievement and professional engagement and personal growth and professional development of the PSC. among teachers when grouped by sex, but there is no significant difference when respondents group by age, educational attainment, school level, frequency of attending professional educational seminars, sponsoring entity or the seminars to the teachers and in your own services. For the recommendation that the teachers will be aware of their strengths and weaknesses when it comes to the domains of PTSD so that they can improve themselves and eventually be quality education to their students to prepare them towards globalization. Special attention should be given by them in establishing community linkages and professional engagement and personal growth and professional development that are responsible for learners like university, which planning and designing of learning opportunities are very important. Thank you, and
Thank you very much for that. Sorry, Nick John from the EO. Now, next. Next slide, we have a course study of um, Amerigo Bernard Ramos Jr. from Bulacan Agriculture at St. Andrews, Pinao San Ildefon, so Bulacan and the Philippines. Uh, this is on the effects of background music, classical and in Akle High School. Uh, hello, po, sir, Christopher. Sorry for the interruption, sir. Uh, yes, yes, po. Uh, sir, sorry, po, sir, because kasi, kasi I'm going to pass sa Kabila, sir. I'm going to pass on to Kabila, sir. No, no worries, po. So, I'm going to pass on to Actually, your paper yes, will be next. You are just okay, right you, on sir. time. Right on time. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, once again, let's welcome um, um, Mr. Amerigo Bernardo Ramos, Jr. Pleasant day to everyone and welcome to International Conference on Education, Environment, and Agriculture 2021. My name is Amerika B. Ramos Jr. from Bulacan Agricultural State College, and I am here to present my study entitled Effects of Background Music, Classical, Jazz, and Pop on Students' Performance in Science 9 in Akle High School. For the introduction, one of the specific strategies now commonly used to supplement and enhance student learning is the use of background music. Studies have shown that music plays a very important role, and it has With this information, the effort in use of background music in teaching or during independent work time can become a means to promote student learning and further increase their performance in science. For the conceptual framework, the input process output. For the input, we have the pretests, lesson in grade nine science, unit three. And for the process, the use of background music during the activity in ICL and written quiz. For the output, we have the post tests and the effects of background music on the performance of students. For the research questions, the general problem of the study is how effective is the use of background music on students' performance in Science 9? Specifically, the study aims to answer the following questions. Number one, is there a significant difference between the mean scores in pre-tests and post-tests of Science 9 students with background music and without background music? Number two, which among the three background music genres, classical, jazz, and pop, significantly increase the student's performance in science time? For the significance of the study, the information obtained from this study will be of great value to the Department of Education. This provides information pertaining to the different strategies that could bring positive results in the Philippine classroom environment. The use of background music and seeking would help using students' performance in science. For the methodology, the study utilized a descriptive method of research to appraise the effects of background music on students' performance in science 9. A pre-test, post-test control and experimental group design were used in the research. The interpretation and the description of the data gathered were presented. For the respondents and research design, the subject of this study was the grade nine students of Akle High School located at Akle San Alfonso Bulacan. The totality of the students for the school year 2016-2017 is 142 students from section nine Manga, nine Addis, and nine Chico that consists of 78 female students and 64 students. 
recycling method, Section 9 ng was the control group, while Section 9 at least and 9 Chico were the experimental groups. A total of 85 students were exposed to the use of uh, background music. The setup was done since the former is a pilot section, while the latter are heterogeneous sections. The study investigated if there was a significant difference between the so uh, scores of the control and experimental group. The instruments that was used in the study was 10-point multiple-choice pre- and post-tests patterned from the grade 9 science module. This was done to cover the content of the study. This also made it as valid and reliable because the questions and contents were all in line with the content and performance standards set by the Department of Education. That was utilized in the experiment were pop music from Billboard charts, archive pop songs in 2015, and jazz music from smooth jazz songs, Billboard 2015, and classical music patterned from the study conducted by MAAS in 2013. Speakers were placed inside the classroom in front and at the back and displayed during activity or ICL. For the data analysis, the scripted procedure was used for analysis and interpretation. Once the data were gathered, it was analyzed using MS Excel. A paired t-test determined if there was a significant increase in the mean scores before and after the use of background music in Science 9. To be considered significant, 0 0.05 degrees of freedom was set. For the results and discussion, so the effect of background music on students' performance in Science 9. Uh, uh, the results revealed that through the pre-test and post-test experimental design, it is shown in Table 1 the significant difference between the performance of the students before and after their exposure to the background music. Three background music genres were utilized in this study. So these are the results of the pre-test, post-test scores in the uh, three music genres, the classical, the pop, and the jazz. A mean gain score of 535 from the mean post-test scores of 6.82 was obtained from the classical music. For the pop music, the mean post-test score of 5.235 yielded a mean gain score of 3.047. Furthermore, a mean gain score of 3.05 was attained from the mean post test score of 4.988 from the 10 items. Comparison among the mean gain scores as can be noticed from the graph. Classical music exhibited the biggest number of gain scores from which is 5.035. It is further depicted that though all of the genres. Thus, the null hypothesis was rejected. This further supports. The different research finds that background music can increase the performance of the students. Among the three music genres, classical music exhibited the greatest number of, the, uh, of increase in gain score. The significance of this research on background music would be of great use to teachers and their students. Concentration and focus were very evident during the study. External noises were eliminated because of the background music being played during the activities and ICLs. Furthermore, students were able to accomplish tasks on time allotted for them 
to the comprehension. For the recommendation, researcher recommends for a future study to increase the number of participants. Increasing the size will make the study more relevant and significant. The selection of music can also be a factor to consider in future study. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Stay safe and God bless us all. Thank you very much to Enrico Bernardo Lounge Jr. from Bulacan Agricultural State College. Now let's continue with the presentation. This time we have two from Caracara State University, University of San Jose, Butuan City, Philippines, and of course one is from Cebu City, Philippines, on their study assessing students' ecological awareness, knowledge, practices, and impact of the flood prone from K-12 senior high schools in Metro Manila, Philippines. Friends, let's all welcome Julie S. Drami and Marilu Yana. It's my fellow researchers, distinguished guests, and to the committee facilitators of this International Conference of Education, Environment, and Agriculture 2021. It's a good morning or afternoon. So this time, I'm going to present to you our newly conducted study titled Level of Students' Ecological Awareness, Knowledge, Practices, and Impact of the Flood Professor High School in Metro Manila. My name is Julius Barani from Providence University of Kuwa City, and my co-researcher, Marilu Yadaw from University of San Jose Ruitos, Cebu City. So the introduction. The Earth is a beautiful living planet, the universe has a common habitat of more than 7 billion human populations and millions of species of biodiversity. So our planet Earth provides us with fewer shelters and most of our basic needs every day. So what are some facts and figures in our country? First, an average Filipino produces at least half a kilo of garbage on a daily basis. Second, an urban dweller grows a big point big garbage. Of daily garbage. Third, the country produces 36,000 tons or 5,000 packs of food waste per day, according to the Nalf Intellectual. Then the Philippines lost in the economy of the population because of the two ecological problems caused by flood alone in the national capital region, according to JICA in 2018. And then this scenario increases the country's vulnerability, especially in poor and marginalized. And the government must appropriately regulate to implement ecological laws like the Republic of Mexico's history or the quality of ecological soul in which is managed So, what are some issues and concerns? So, poor solid waste management is supposed to system causes an ecological degradation and garbage pollution, particularly in water and glass con. Then, flood caused by flashes or solid waste materials in canals, ponds, rivers, lakes, creeks, and beaches, and cause major problems in the cities. So, education is a very important vehicle for uplifting the facilities for sustainable ecology. The young generations are recognized as ecological stakeholders for specific ecological problems. And then the study is important as a material evaluation of risk management system based on ecology conservation and school participation. So why is it important to clean the environment? So first, uh, clean environment is to join protective systems and conservation resources, such as water, land, and air. Then factors that negatively impact the environment in the pollution of water, land, and air, pollutants also adversely affect human health, causing health conditions and diseases. Then, apart from the golden rule, work from the cleanest area toward the largest area. So this greatly reduces the risk of cause contamination. And then to maintain a clean environment, people need to dispose garbage properly, recycle waste products and purchase. Recycled products. So, this is the beauty and the beauty of Metro Manila. So, as you can see, Metro Manila is known for its mega infrastructures like high rise buildings, condominiums, hotels, establishments, railroads, giant airports, and airports along its supermarkets, restaurants, vehicles, and more. And if you to look at the other side of Metro Manila, we have the DOP Stuban. It's more from the Philippines, but if you're willing to look at the other side of the Manila, the local might be it's more progressive in the Philippines. So as you can see, if there is quick in the Manila, there is an immediate this water 
there's the children that plug in from drainage canals, creeks, rivers, and there's all these massive plastic extensions to those areas in the city. There are many schools that are located, and I could you imagine the dirt springs by water coming from this water out in Western Manila. So, of these are the last problems we were studying. First, what is the level of students who describe as to be very smart system and most of our parents are probably some impact. Second, is there a significant relationship of age and gender of students when it comes to the risk management system in the school? Third, is there a significant difference with students with the risk management system between different and private schools? And fourth, in what ecological risk management system do different and private schools differ? So this is the study area and demographic data of our study. So the study was conducted in the city of Manila, Pasig City, Peros, Pasig City, Tagalog City, Manila uh, City, and we did not end up uh, uh, in other cities like Marikina and City and some other cities because they have been so, people want to present the covert demographic of the first span. So, first, we have the gender, uh, both deep in private schools. We have a total, a total participants of 335 uh, senior high school students. For females, we have 377 males, we have 228. And for the age range, we have uh, 14 to 16, 2025, 17 to 18, 2096. And in 19 to 22, we had 14. And then we conducted only uh, Two strands in senior high school, the STEM and TBL, because of limited access. So, uh, in our study, uh, we use this positional uh, research design and then uh, analysis. We use also and the details for the independent means. And then, uh, for the proper analysis, this is the script and the instrument. So it was adapted from uh, an adult that we take the time age, and it was validated and validated by the researchers. So we got the point box alpha of 0.816. And the So, we uh, we
students, then students must follow our programs to educate students on ecological practices for sustainable development and for character formation committed to, um, to become pro environment member society. And schools must strengthen through enhanced science curriculum in education of ecological concepts, principles, and practices in order to promote active student engagement and establish uh, participation in various communication campaigns. So this is a conclusion of our study. So it revealed that both schools need to be more creative in providing environmental awareness programs that allow students to work hand in hand to care for the environment. They got this pollution with pollution of nature as a cost and activity by waste in, in, in the canals, in the drainage and some. And, and more. Then the government policy in the private schools in this regard is very explicit as environmental education is concerned. And David schools should build higher schools compared to private schools, maybe true to the government schools curricular exercise turn out to be fruitful, yet effort must be continued. So these are the conditions of our study. Okay, so uh, and then there are four recommendations. And then, uh, in general, holistic approach and consolidated based management uh, education in the school is vital to building a dynamic based on management systems and programs. And these are some of the recommendations of our study. Okay. These are some snapshots of the senior high schools. Okay. And these are some direct references of our study. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much for listening in my presentation and have a seat ahead of us. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Mr. Drame and Ms. Yadaw for sharing your research paper with us. And next in line, of course, we have um, the paper of Ms. Yaga, Ian Yaga, Roponog Consultado, and last year, from Leyte Normal University, Leyte, Philippines. Their study is entitled Dive into the Dark Contours of Pandemic Lived Experiences of Least Service Social Studies Teachers. Good day, everyone. To the organizers of the International Conference on Education, Environment, and Agriculture, or ICEA 2021, Thank you very much for these opportunities. My name is Tudas Masik Kaluga, the graduate professor of Lake Normal University. Together with my co researchers are Ms. Ian Vey, Noreen A. Niara, faculty of Visay State University, and Mr. Ronald Guillermo Sotado, faculty of the Estudio Verbo DBT. Our paper is titled Dive into the Dark Contours of Pandemic Big Experiences of Free Service Social Studies Teachers. All higher education institutions in the Philippines have offers teacher education curriculum require their students to have teaching practical as one of their requirements according to Ula 2016. However, according to McDonald 1993, teaching practical is considered as a most shocking part of the teacher education training. The COVID-19 pandemic resulted in drastic changes in the education system in a country which built for challenges to service teachers and free service teachers as well. The study aims to find out the challenges experienced by the free service social studies teachers during their teaching practice and program with a normal mode of learning, which may be covered in theory and practice. Here are challenges of the free service teachers from the previous studies. First, classroom management. Second, teaching pedagogy. Third, generation of the practicum. And fourth, is operating teacher based problem. And then, here are the studies identified. First, previous studies on free service teachers, plus some free service launch teachers. Most of the studies on free service teachers in the literature review were done outside the buildings in the last. Even in these service teachers were in a different environment. These studies anchor the social learning theory that was developed by Albert Mandura. Mandura recognizes four principles of this theory attention, retention, reproduction, and motivation. In the context of this study, first, we need to pay attention, observe the moderating teacher, and how he manages the class, delivers his lesson, the behavior of the students, and how these papers work, works are created. The second is retention. These service teachers are sent to different private or public schools when they can apply the theory of learning college. This time, they will use different methods, techniques, and strategies in these their lessons. They should also remember that they retain their classroom and manager for operating teachers, remember their suggestions on how these students improve these lesson plans, methods, and strategies. The third is reproduction. This time, when they learn three years of being and how they should be in a college to be allowed. 
in a school or its motivation. During the pre-service stage of every education student, they should be motivated and continue what they have started despite the challenges that they have experienced. Like on real life experiences of the pre-service social studies teachers, other challenges in teaching practical with a new normal mode of learning. In addition, the studies are in social learning theory, especially in the core principles, namely attention, retention, reproduction, and motivation. This will help other pre-service teachers now they will present the challenges they will encounter while they are having their teaching practical. This study utilized descriptive phenomenological method and uh, by documenting the experiences of the participants, especially the challenges that they have experienced and uh, of these pre-service social studies teachers. In terms of data collection, the researchers utilized unstructured type of interview utilizing open questions. Since the researchers were not able to meet the participants for a face-to-face -face interview because of pandemic, the interview was conducted virtually via Google Meet. The local study was conducted in the laboratory school in Manu State University in Eastern Visayas, utilizing uh, convenience sampling. The researchers choose the nearest individuals as participants in this study. The participants of the study are actually bachelor of secondary education, major in social studies, and they are in their fourth year and, and currently involved in uh, having their teaching practicum in the second semester of school year 2020-2021. Currently, there are 16 pre-service social studies teachers who are having their teaching practicum in the other school in one of the universities in Eastern Visayas. In terms of data analysis, the researchers utilize Kulaitis' descriptive epidemiological method of data analysis. This method consists of seven steps, as mentioned by Moron 2015. This method is usually used in social sciences research, especially if it is phenomenology. In terms of ethical considerations, the researchers adhere to policies related to human ethics, where anonymity of the participants were kept hidden to protect them from any harm in the future. Informed consent form were read and passed with approval prior to conduct of the interviews. Also, the researchers see approval from the respective school officials where the participants are related and currently having their practice teaching. Finally, the transcriptions of their interviews were sent back to the participants to ensure reliability and validity of the data. Based on Kaleidis' descriptive phenomenological method of data analysis, we were able to generate the following themes. Difficulty in managing a virtual classroom, difficulty in putting pedagogies into practice, unstable interconnection, a major challenge in distance learning, innovative pedagogical practices, assessment in distance learning, the language choose in lessons delivery, personal challenges, and teaching practical experience. Difficulty in managing the virtual classroom. Managing the class is one of the most significant challenges that the participants experience. Since it is not a face-to-face -face mode of learning, the participants are having a hard time in how they are going to control the students. They are doubtful that the students might be using other apps while in class since the camera is turned off to have a good quality meeting. This result is also revealed from the previous studies conducted by Kanye et al. 2019, Baltasar et al. 2019, Putsu 2014, and Pula 2014, which found out that most of the pre-service teachers are challenged especially in discussing the lesson. Difficulty in putting pedagogies into practice. Most common problem of the pre service teachers for having difficulties in teaching methodology and the inability to apply what they have learned into a real classroom setting. This relates to the study of Bodil and Oskan 2016 found out that pre service teachers was able to select a good strategy in motivating the and making the lesson more engaging, but was not able to manage the class and control the time. Unstable internet connection, a major challenge in distance learning. Since students and teachers are still not allowed to go to school because of the pandemic, the mode of learning was utilized to ensure the continuity of learning. Online classes were done through Google Meet as revealed by the participants. In order to make the conduct of classes possible, internet connection is needed. The participants revealed that a major source of problem in the new mode of learning is the unstable internet connection. The unstable internet connection is the reason why the demonstration teachings of the pre service teachers were not successful. Innovative pedagogical practices. Since the pandemic turned the institutions to go from offline to go online, teachers experiment with new technologies that is necessary in online teaching. This include online applications that require internet connection. The participants revealed that they use online applications such as Kahoot, Intimeter, and Socrative as a strategy in their lessons in the same mode of learning, but was unsuccessful in using it. It was further revealed that the unstable internet connection was the reason why they were not successful in implementing it. Assessment in distance learning. Making an assessment is another problem faced by the participants. Similarly, study of Baldassar et al. 2019 found that most of the participants lack assessment strategies. Another problem found by the participants is the implementation of the test in an online setting. The language use in the lesson delivery. The language use in teaching is another challenge faced by the participants because they need to translate some Filipino words into English so the students can understand them. Personal challenges. The pre-survey social studies teachers admitted that they faced personal challenges while having their teaching practicum. One of the participants admitted that he lacks enthusiasm and motivation to observe classes with this kind of setting. 
This finding is in line with the study of use of it. Out 2014, found that some of the peer service teachers emphasized that they do not feel motivated and they felt that the teaching practicum was a burden for them. Teaching practicum experience. It was revealed during the interview that the participants so far had experienced to the three times of demonstration teaching. This result is also supported in the study of MOOCs 2014 and USOC 2014 that the duration of the teaching practicum was not enough for them to get used to the real classroom environment of teaching itself, which prevented them to perform their best in teaching. Conclusion. Majority of the pre-service social studies teachers admit that their teaching practicum was challenging and full of ups and downs. It can be concluded that the most common problem encountered by the pre-service teachers is the classroom management. In this study, pre-service teachers did not meet their students face-to-face -face since the classes were done virtually. Hence, problems in handling and controlling the students occur especially because the pre-service teachers cannot see what their students are doing while attending the class since the camera are turned off to have a good quality online class. Other challenges encountered by the pre-service social studies teachers was the unsuccessful use of new methods for the new mode of learning. This shows the pre-service teachers were not fully prepared and well equipped to teach in this new mode of learning. Implementing assessment was also a challenge for the pre-service social studies teachers since everything is done virtually, including the tests and quizzes. This now poses doubts if the students are doing their outputs honestly. The language used in the delivery of the lesson was also a challenge for the pre-service social studies teachers since their students are used to speaking in English. For them, the biggest challenge they experienced was having an unstable internet connection. Having an unstable internet connection affected the delivery of the lesson and managing the class. It can be concluded that having a stable internet connection is imperative in this new mode of learning. Most of the pre-service social studies teachers highlighted that they should have more demonstration teachings. They felt that their experience in their teaching practicum is not enough to prepare them for the real world of teaching. Even though the study aims to know the challenges experienced with pre-service teachers, it is clear that since it is conducted in only one university in the city with a small size of participants from the population, and data was gathered through a one-on-one -on -one online interview. However, with the limitations mentioned above, this study will help other future researchers to conduct the same study and have a greater number of participants and even the way of collecting the data. It's recommended that before these pre-service teachers are deployed to the different competing schools, trainings and seminars should be conducted, especially the methods and strategies in an online mode of learning. Interactivity of every pre-service teacher should be considered also, since not all of the pre-service teachers have a good internet connection. Lastly, it can be concluded that although their teaching practicum was challenging, they expressed that it was fun, exciting, fulfilling, and memorable. It was memorable because they had their teaching practicum in this new mode of learning. That is all. Thank you all for listening. Here are our references. Thank you very much for that wonderful presentation. Coming from, of course, Lady Normal University, we have had Ian D. Yada, Ronald Consultado, and we also have Las Johansen Lusa. Okay, next, this will be the last for the second before we have our second open forum. Okay, we have, of course, from Rublon State University, Rublon, Philippines on the topic or on presenting um, her research paper on reshaping the preschool mathematics curriculum in a new normal era, feedback from the parents and teachers, modular instruction assessment. Friends, let's all have this welcome of course, Ms. Amaranth M. Wong. Good day, everyone. I am expressing my gratitude to the organizer of this conference, the Central People City University of Agriculture, and to the Scientific Review Committee. Thank you for accepting my paper. I am glad to share the findings of my study entitled Reshaping the Preschool Mathematics Curriculum in the New Normal Era Feedback from the Parents and Teachers Modular Instruction Assessment. The primary concern of this study is about the content appropriateness of math modules for teachers in the of the world. There are a number of reasons that let me carry out this study. First, the current situation leads us to switch to remote learning, which eventually has become challenging due to pressing concerns. And one of these is the capability of teachers to deliver remote learning instruction, be it modular or virtual. This pushed many researchers into the need of curious studies pertaining to this situation. Second, there is still limited studies in the kindergarten level regarding the applicability of distance education in a massive scale in the countryside, specifically in our district. Hence, it is important to contribute information in this area that may be used by authorities for decision.
The short period of preparation makes them vulnerable to errors. Serious articles have been released about errors in modular learning materials. The public has expressed a growing alarm on the quality of education of over 24 million students during the pandemic because of mishaps such as painful grammar errors, chromatic equations, and modules directly in general circulation. Although this is not a significant concern among many parents, these modules and modular instruction delivery must be necessary to assure quality. Test of the mathematics mode. A group of the demographics such as age, gender, and educational attainment. It will be the learning competencies from the first to third quarter that are difficult to teach or to master by the B school pupils. And the last one, we can mean the resource materials that can be developed to enhance the physical mathematics curriculum. These studies are important and stuff of the CIPT model of curriculum evaluation. This model provides a means for generating data relating to four stages of first, the context evaluation, which continuously assesses the needs and problems in the context to help decision makers determine the goal and objective. The input evaluation which assess alternative means for achieving those goals to help decision makers choose optimal means. The process evaluation, which monitors the processes both to ensure that the means are actually being implemented and to make a decision. And the product evaluation, which compares the actual ends with intended ends and leads to a series of recycling decisions. This is the study's conceptual framework, which clearly shows the major variables of the study as well as the direction of the study for the CIPT model of evaluation, but with minor modification. For the research methodology, the design is non-experimental. The study is descriptive for the collection for the digital for random sampling direction of the pair expanders. The data collection method is survey with a question of the data. The statistical tools used are frequency and percentage, median, man with you, and personal wallet age. The results are as follows. For the demographic profile in terms of age, majority of the teachers and parents are in the middle age with age range of 31 to 50 years old. As for gender, all the teachers are females, while for the parents, 94.7% are females and only 5.3% are males. In terms of educational attainment, majority of the teachers are with units earned in MA, while the frequency distribution of the parent respondents are scattered, but many of them are high school graduate. This graph shows a summary of respondents rating out at the cooperatives of the modules. Learning competency number six, telling the names of the days and months in general. Three, identifying sequence of events in general. And two, telling that the quantity of a set of objects does not change even though the arrangement has changed, receive the lowest ratings. The media scores of three and the IQR of one show that these competencies are only in the upper grade level. The rest of the competencies were rated very upper grade with respondents. As for the difference between the teachers and parents rating and the content of cooperatives of the modules, the one with new test results present no significant difference in almost all competencies except in competency number six, telling the names of the days and months in general, which acquired. 0.03 p value that is less than 0.05. This means that of all the competencies, only in this particular competency did the teachers and parents significantly differ in their grading. I have divided the respondents' age into three categories such as younger, middle, and older, and test the significant differences in the ratings based on these groupings. Based on the results, the data show no statistical differences as evidenced with the p-value results, which are all higher than the set alpha value at 0.05 level of significance. In like manner, when parent participants to group according to sex, there appears no statistical differences in the perception and the modulus content appropriateness, covering almost all the eight competencies except for C3, identifying the sequence of events, and C6, telling the names of days in a week, months in a year, which registered significant differences. Thus, it implies that the participants shared different perceptions in these two competencies, 
the C3 and C6 were similar perception and the majority of the competitors. When looked according to educational attainment, the parent participants' perception did show significant differences only to the competency for root counting to 20 C7, with college graduate respondents having a higher rating among the others. The rest of the competencies obtained P values higher than the set alpha value of 0.05, implying no statistically significant variation. This slide shows the teachers' and parent participants' perception as to what among the 50 learning competencies covered in this study are quite difficult for them to teach or for the pupils to master. Based on the data, it can be seen that telling the months in a year, C13, and telling the names to days in the week, C12, ranks first and second, obtaining the highest frequency counts of 147 and 122, respectively. These two competencies are more likely perceived to be challenging to teach, and this might be due to the fact that learning these competencies will require reading, sequencing and involves memorization, making the competencies slightly complex. Other competencies that are considered difficult to teach or to master by the people are telling that the quantity of a set of objects does not change even though the arrangement has changed, C5, identifying sequence of events before and after, C6, identifying sequence of events first, next, and last, C7, root counting to 20, C14, and sorting and classifying objects according to function or use. C4. This slide shows the various learning competencies that are given enhancement through links from internet sources and videos translated in local dialect. Eight competencies were given enhancement by providing external sources available from the internet, such as YouTube and other learning sites. On the other hand, those competencies under 4, 5, 6, 7, 12, 13, and 14 are provided with both external and locally translated videos. This is an example of a video translated in our local
the implication is still the same. This study highlighted the importance of feedback from among the various stakeholders that include parents and teachers enhancing the release of the curriculum. But it's not the only focus of the focus of the preschool module. It provides based information as to which competencies must be given consideration to further improve learners' mastery. Teachers and curriculum planners, therefore, are encouraged to deal with this feedback in a way that it will enhance not just the preschool academic success, but also the curriculum, the school, and thank you very much. Okay, there you go. Thank you, thank you very much um, to Mom Amara Wong for sharing your study with us. Now, we now come to the second, uh, for the second of open order. So once again, everybody, everybody bring on your camera instead because Mom, please help to take our uh, photos, our pictures, or photo documentation. There you go. So nice to see you. Beautiful faces of our participants this morning. Okay, so this is now again uh, the open forum to provide us with an account and maybe what happened to the research after. So, definitely be answering some of the questions to be provided by the participants. Okay, so once again, I would like to acknowledge, of course, for this particular open forum, uh, we have Sir Nick Jandi Solar, Solar, um, Mom Anneli Cordero. Uh, Amiri Go Bernardo Ramos Jr., Julie S. Derame, Marily Ladao. Of course, we have Ian D. Liaga, Ronald Consultade, and then Lats Lanson Talaga, Kaluza, and Amaral Tanya. So forgive me if I am butchering and mispronouncing your names and other names. Okay? So I believe in as well as the, the, the use of pronouns that are these. Um, okay, let's proceed to the forum. We are still guided by the, the, the general question, which is what was the problem you would like or basically uh, to address? So, in your institutions, basically, you have a particular problem that you would like to address. And then, with the help of your study, what was the solution that basically you, you give um, or gave? To basically address the, the problem. Okay, so and then if there are follow up questions, then we will definitely entertain them. Let's start, of course, with the first, the second batch. We have Mr. Nick John um, Solar from uh, Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Sir. Good morning, everyone. Um, actually, if, uh, if we, you can remember the results of uh, of the sending of our Filipino students in different uh, international tests, for example, the PISA and the rest. Yeah. Oh, we, 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 we have shown or yes, uh, we are on on the list number bottom. or we are on the on the bottom, yes. So uh, and uh, another thing there is in order to answer this um uh, this difficulty or in order to at least we have to adhere on the PTSD or Philippine professional standards for teachers. Actually, we, we in that sense, for example, whether we like it or not, but teachers on the grassroots levels, we are the for so those people that made policy on the path. Pero actually, they don't know what really happens on, on the field. So, see, the government, the government, at least the government actually, they, they, they did not know what are the burdens of the teachers in the field. So, maybe for us already to, to go back to this policy, like for example, professional standards for teachers and address every domain for example kahit hindi naman lahat sa isa-isa lang to answer the different difficulty or the different problems that the, our education sector students facing so I think kung balik ako ng PPSC and I kung kung uh, kung uh, I study first there the linkages because because in the present time also, deaf and schools can stand on their own. 
like for example, we ask for donations or for us to to, uh, to print our modules. So I think we the first thing there is in this present time is to strengthen our community linkages in order kind of uh, to deliver uh or you know, the best na the best education to our students in the new normal life uh, is a better education lang through this module. So the second there is the development of teachers. So we'll be, we'll be developing teachers in our field. So in order also that because we know that best teachers will also yield best students. So naman, best better teacher will yield better students. So ano? Maybe it is for the personal development or at least for continuing education and for same thing. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Solar for that. Kasi ako, uh, based on what I understand, DPST was definitely crafted uh, on the part of the um, high education institutions uh, that are producing teachers definitely so that they are guided. No, alam natin, yes. yung kultura natin, nakakama sila, paglabas sila, eto yung mga kailangan ng harapin, handa sila. Tama po. Tama, tama. Yes. Okay, do we have so, further on the Yes, sir. Please continue. Actually, the real situation, there is still a uh, mismatch of uh, what, what are being taught in our tertiary education. Then, mm -hmm. and that's when we are going to get to in our Yes. Yes. So, yun yun. Uh, siguro la, nandito lahat o halos lahat ay uh, as teacher education institution. So, isang bagay na dapat natin nandito po, di ba? At mga ba yung mga nangaroon ka natin? Doon po sa PSC, uh, ito yung isulit na natin ba? Ito yung measure na uh, uh, measure na makakatulong sa mga magiging guru sa iraharap kung talaga sila ba ay makakaranas ng success kapag nandun na sila sa PSC. So, huwag natin kakalimutan yan, no? You are guided with the PSC. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, so, Sola, for your research. Now, let's move to the next one. This one is quite you know, interesting, integration and music for teaching. So, we have um, Sir, uh, Ms. Um, Amerigo Bernardo Ramos. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Good, good afternoon. afternoon. Nice to see you. Uh, I, I can see that you're having difficulty uh, in, you know, you know, choosing programs, but I'm okay. I'm comfortable in any kind of program you'll use. So, Amazing that 
um, classical music is really um, effective in assisting or somehow giving concentration and removing the white noise or the background noise, assuring their study. And it was also supported by the what we call, I don't know if you're familiar, familiar with the Mozart effect. So most of the cartoons and other uh, brilliant minds use classical music while they are studying and you know concentrating. So I believe it's really something that we should also use in not only in high school, in elementary, but also in uh, higher education institutions also. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that's interesting. Now I have a follow-up questions on that. Yes, um, Amir, we have here um, in the conduct of your study and after you know that's very encouraging. The result was very encouraging. Now, what is the next move for a uh, high school? Mm, yeah, so as I have mentioned a while ago, um, after the the conduct of my research, it was um, already validated by the Associate Division Office of Bulacan. And mm -hmm. our first of our professors for Guevara um, um, initiated the, the school organization committee to use this study, the results of this study, as part of their continuous improvement project. So that's why it is being rolled out to not only in grade nine, but also from grade is seven. It already? Yes, yes. The, the integration of music to new yes. science and math into other disciplines. Oh, yes. that's good. That's very good. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Do you have questions from other participants? You cannot actually make use of our chat box if you are quite shy to, you know, to share with your question and then you can make use of the chat box. Now, by the way, uh, the attendance sheet, or I mean the link for that in attendance for today's session is actually shared on the chat box. Okay, so don't forget to fill out the form. Okay, now let's continue. Thank you very much, Amir, uh, for that. Now let's let's call, of course, our, let's of course let's call uh, Ian B. Niaga and Johan. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, let me tell you first what inspired us the research to conduct this study. Um, what inspired inspired us to conduct the study is that most of the studies, previous studies on pre-service uh, teachers kind of were conducted pre-pandemic environment. And then most of the studies that we have run were actually focused on pre-service language teachers and most of it were conducted outside the country, right? So for the problems identified in, in our study, Actually, the main goal of our study, of this quality study, is to unfold, is to identify and describe and present the challenges and problems experienced by these pre-service social studies teachers in this new mode of learning, in this new normal. So, um, in our results, uh, results shows that the most common um, problem experienced by these pre-service social studies teachers was the difficulty in managing the virtual classroom and that their most uh, the biggest challenge that they have experienced was the unstable internet connection. For the concrete for the solution, our study don't have actually a concrete solution. That is one of the limitations of our study. All right. What we do have recommendation, which is an initial step to produce solution. So in our recommendation, we recommended that before these free service uh, teachers should uh, be deployed to other schools, uh, they should undergo first trainings and seminars and different educational technology tools and new methods and strategies on uh, that is fit in the new mode of learning, that is fit in this new normal. And lastly, the internet connectivity of research teachers should also be considered since not all, all of the research teachers have a good or a stable internet connection. That will be all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's what we're going to ask. Um, do you want to? I mean, I'd like to ask uh, Johan Sen, Mr. Kaluza, are you going to ask something or I mean, 
did miss me as a what I did do, do the job. I guess none addition additional so that's very good. Um, my question I had um there's one question about out in my mind. Were you there? Were you um with the students since this is lived experience? Or um, uh, okay, sir. Um in the conduct of our study, we only had a, a virtual meeting with them. And that is one of the limitations of our study. Since we cannot be with them face to face or be one of the participants in that in their like we cannot observe them in their one of their online classes so that is actually one of the limitations of our study so it is recommended that if, yes we were able to interview them virtually since um they are they are we are in a different area let's say in LinkedIn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so we've done it in google meet so Okay. Yeah. So that's good. That's good enough. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, much, Miss Diaga, for that. Of course, do not forget to to ask also, um, uh, Mr. Birame and Miss Diaga, if you are around. Okay, sir. Uh, good afternoon. It's past twelve already. Uh, yeah. So, uh, the study actually was conducted in Metro Manila because uh, it's a portion of a requirement in my PhD in education at the La Salle University, mm -hmm. together with my researcher, uh, engineer Marilu Yado. Uh, she is a chemical engineer actually. And then uh, our study actually, sir, is a uh, reenactment of so many uh, research studies conducted in Metro Manila regarding student waste management uh, system for for materials in Metro Manila. Because uh, have you noticed uh, Metro Manila uh, the big problem there actually, the mm -hmm. problem actually mm -hmm. is how to manage the garbage actually. So that's that's where we we had an interest to read of the study. And then we, in this study, we, we focused into the senior high school uh, as the new, new set of generation of students. And then uh, we found out in the study that uh, deep in schools, it's more aware when it comes to ecological awareness because we make sure uh, four variables in our study. So uh, based on the uh, testimony uh, we conducted our our service room
the duet is very important piece of information for planners and administrators of the university as it will serve as a basis to pursue better plans to improve its foreign program services to the students and the community clients it is serving. This is study is the determining of the graduate development of the university campus. Its objectives are the following determine the demographic profile of the which in terms of sex factors, the rates location of residents, educational attainment and training for one service, standard of the college, and reasons for pursuing studies, many observe the risk monthly income and the respondents in terms of number of people who are employed, present job as first job, of time to plan in the first job, what of time is stayed in the first job, present position, we were like the business of the company, we just stay in the job, we just for us in the job. The third year, the first of the first and the third year employment, between the significant relationship between the respondents and under employment setup. The third year, the suggestion is that it would be undertaken for the first year. This is the framework that shows the concept of our study. This is a study is based on the concept of the related liability. Said the social demographic profile, the need of the community, and the relevance of the course curriculum. The arrow that connects the BA ed course curriculum and the community needs speaks of the relevance of the BA ed curriculum in the needs of the community, and the inclusion of the community needs to the BA ed curriculum. For our research methodology, the data science is non experimental. This research is a scripted type. We use complete enumeration in the selection of the students. The data were gathered through the survey using the graduate research survey instrument developed by the Commission on Higher Education. The data were analyzed using statistical tools such as frequency percentage, and spermanorum. As for the results of the study, for the demographic profile, majority of the surveyed graduates are singles, females. They are within the municipality of Romblon, Romblon. All of them are still bachelor degree. Most of them graduated in 2019 and have no training yet. As for length of service, majority have been in the service for less than five years. Are earning 5,100 pesos to 10,000 pesos every month. As for position, many of them are occupying professional, technical, or supervised item. With regards to employment status, majority of the respondents are employed. When asked if their present job is their first job, 13% of them responded yes, while 18% said no. When asked how long did it take them before landing in their first job, 12% said less than a year, 11% said one to two years, and 8% said more than two years. As for the length of time stayed in the first job, 8% of them said they worked in the first job less than a year only. 10% said they worked in the first job for one to two years. And 13% of them they worked in the first job for more than two years. As for the respondents' present employment status, three-fourths of the total population are occupying a permanent or regular position. When it comes to employment status in terms of name of company, many of the respondents are working in TEPED, in private company, 
and in private school. As for the line of business of the company where the respondents are presently working, many said that culture and education. As for the reason in staying in the job, one part of the total population said it because of salaries and benefits. Some other reasons are career traveling, related to special skills, related to course, and family influence. When asked what are the reasons for accepting the job, many answered it is because the job is related to special skills, career challenge, and salaries and benefits. As for factors that contributed to the respondents' employment, communication skills ranked the first, followed by the human relations skills, critical skills, and problem-solving skills. The last is the entrepreneurial skills. When the respondents' demographic profile was correlated with their employment status, civil status, sex, and educational attainment, posted no significant relationship as the generated P values are higher than 0 0.05 level of significance. But the rest of the profile, such as location of residence, training, length of service, monthly income, and position appeared to have significant correlation with employment status. This means that this profile somehow influenced the respondents' employability. The following are the suggestions given by the graduates themselves to further improve the course curriculum. Hiring a faculty with specialized training or degree, send faculty to relevant training, improve the university facility, and strictly impose admission and retention policy. As for the conclusions, majority of the surveyed BA graduates are still singles. Most of them are females, are staying within the municipality, and are still bachelor's degree. Many of them graduated in 2019 and have not attended training or professional development yet. Those who are employed have been in their service for only five years and below. More than 30% of the total population surveyed are still unemployed. Thus, they have no income and no position yet. Majority of the surveyed respondents are already employed. The graduates believe that communication skills, human relations skills, and critical thinking skills are the factors that contributed to their employment status. Majority of the profiles, such as the location of residence, training advanced studies attended, length of service, monthly income, and position rank appeared to have a significant relationship with the graduate's employment status. To further improve the curriculum, the graduate suggested that the university may hire faculty with specialized training or degree. Send faculty to relevant training, improve the university facility, and strictly impose the admission and retention policy. As for the implications of the study, the study provides baseline information as to the employment status of the degree and graduates of the Romulan State University in Long Campus. The findings of the study can be used by the administrator as basis for implementation of programs and projects that would help improve the student soft skills and employability skills. Further, findings can also be used to improve the course curriculum. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much to Madam Rosana Noche for sharing your studies with us. Okay. Now we are now moving on to the last but not the least. Um, this one is from the Polytechnic University 
of the Philippines, Bansud Branch, Bansud Oriental Mindoro, Philippines. We have Maria Josephel Ann Armaapoy on her study, Social Linguistic Competence of Tertiary Students and Analysis of Conservation Using Delheim Speaking Models. Good day, everyone. I am Ms. Maria Joseph L. Ann Apoy, and I'm going to present to you my thesis entitled The Social Linguistic Competence of Tertiary Students An Analysis of Conversation Using Delheim's Speaking Model. Everyone is aware that communication is the vehicle used to express our thoughts, feelings, and ideas. It is essential in all aspects of our everyday lives. Effective communication enhances our personal, social, and career relationships. It allows us to make connections with people from all walks of. Students communicate in a variety of situations, daily such as listening to instructors, employers, classmates, family members, friends, and many others each hour. This study purpose to identify whether or not respondents who are about to take on the corporate world are equipped with enough social linguistic competence, which is an extreme indicator of their probability of landing on the job they want. So this study are first to measure the extent of utilization of English language in different social contexts in terms of peer, family, social, and public, and also to determine the social linguistic competence of the tertiary students provided the mnemonic of speaking model of Delheim's for the account of meaning in communication. This study used mixed method where in both quantitative and qualitative design, so research was used appropriately for different purposes. Using both methods can provide detailed and comprehensive data and interpretation of data. For the extent of utilization of English language in different social contexts, this study used a self-structured questionnaire that has 10 questions per indicator in terms of peers, family, school, and public. It was answered by 35 respondents and was analyzed using statistics and conduct inquiry in an biased objective manner. And this referred also as hard data for quantitative research design. On the other hand, Qualitative design was used to measure the social linguistic competence of the tertiary students by observing participants' answer that was subjected for analysis using Delahine's speaking model. Further, it involves interview, note-taking, videotape, audio recording, and evaluating the participants' raw response to given social context. In order to achieve the instrument's validity for quantitative research design, the researcher sought technical assistance and expertise of the two master teachers and one instructor with at least five to 10 years of experience. For the reliability of the research instrument, after the questionnaire has been validated, it was subjected to the test retest method to determine the instrument's reliability. 10 students who were not included in the number of respondents were subjected to the test for test of the questionnaire. After 10 days, the questionnaire was used again to the same students. The researcher read and explained the directions prior to the respondents taking off the test to ensure that the participants understood the directions before starting. After answering the self-structured questionnaire, they were kept for evaluation and analysis with confidentiality. The data gathering procedure. A letter of endorsement was requested from the Office of Director of Graduate Studies and sent to the Dean of PAP Bansud Branch to ask for permission and approval to conduct the study with the target respondents, participants, which were the graduating class of BSIP. Upon getting the approval and securing all the paper necessary, to execute the objective of the study, the researcher, with the consent from the head of respondents, convened all 35 respondents in a room. It, each one was provided a set of self-structured questionnaire 
the researcher read and explain the directions prior to the respondent's taking of the test to ensure each and every respondent has understood the directions. Once all that have said and done, the respondents answer the questionnaire at their own pace. For qualitative research design with the target participants, another letter signed and approved by designated signatories sent to respective firms and offices where the non stratified aid participants for the qualitative research design phase will apply for OJT. The interviewer got a letter complete with all the details and instructions needed to execute the activity flawlessly. Further, with the cooperation of the interviewer, made sure to secure the normalcy and rawness of the interview flow. The interview was given a heads up that his her statements, questions or anything at all, he or she said during the interview were not subjected to observation and evaluation only. The student responses were taken into account for further observation and evaluation. The conversation was in the English language only. It is equally important and crucial to also preserve the natural ambience of the interview venue. As you can see on the table, it is the extent of utilization of English language in different social contexts in terms of peer, family, school, and public. This is the quantitative data that we gathered. And based on the results in the context of peers, it yields an overall weighted mean of 3.27, which falls under the moderately utilized interpretation. Second indicator we have is the family. So the extent of using English language in the context of family yields an overall weighted mean of 2.69, which falls under the utilized interpretation. And the third one is the school. So the extent of using English language in the area of school yields an overall weighted mean of 3.61, which falls under the moderately utilized interpretation. And that indicator we have for the extent of utilization of English language is the public. So it's of a the, the the indicator public yield an overall weighted mean of 3.41, which falls under the moderately utilized interpretation. For the results and presentation of data for qualitative, which is the social industry competence manifested by participants using the speaking analysis model. So generally, the respondents pose a low level of social industry skills. Many factors may have affected the aptitude, for example, the temperature in the room, the presence of a familiar individual, or the nature of the aptitude. Nonetheless, being in the stage of bridging the academic to corporate, it is high time that these respondents be exposed and well equipped of every scenario that they can come across with in their journey to the corporate world starting with expressing themselves in a manner by which they are fluent, spontaneous, and confident. Needless to say, there is a great call for intervention. For the conclusion of the study, in light of the foregoing findings of the study, the following conclusions have been made. First, the extent of using the English language in different social contexts is more likely utilized when an individual is dealing with around peers at school and interacting with public. Second, social linguistic competence can be honed best at home with the family. Third, the social linguistic competence manifested by the participants using the online speaking analysis model exposed a lot of areas for improvement. Fourth, there is a need to develop and implement an interventional action plan applicable mainly to graduating students prior to setting out the internship. So to make sure they are well equipped by social linguistic skills that they need in order to land in the job they want. For recommendation, first is, these are dynamic times and the way we communicate changes day by day. The schools as the fundamental part of students' learning must be as dynamic as the changes happening to ensure that the students not only catch up with the new, but also to make sure that they can properly engage with the new ways. 
Second, teachers teaching subjects or courses using the English language as a medium of communication and learning must see to it that they stick to the utilization of the said language in class discourses and activities. Third, teachers and leaders of the community must instill the concept of accepting English as the language of education, business, and economy to the young. Fourth is the Ministry of Education should focus not only on the students' fluency in English grammar, but also their proficiency in execution and utilization of the language in different social contexts. Thank you very much. That was uh, Maria Josephel and Arma Apoy from Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Bansu Branch. Okay, there you go. So congratulations, everyone. Basically, we are done with the presentation. And then once again, I'd like to request everybody to turn on your camera if your internet or your bandwidth allow you to, to, to do so. Okay, so definitely we'll be once again taking your pictures as part of our documentation. Okay, so since Ma Maria Josephiel is not around, I'd like to call on Ma'am Amarant Wong. Um, if she's around already or if her bandwidth will allow her to turn on her camera and answer some queries because earlier she actually said that she is actually experiencing um, technical difficulties specifically internet connections because of the weather there in Romeo. okay and then once again i'd like to call on um, um, JB Omawe, if you are with us. Okay, once again. Okay, so there you go. Um, please turn on your camera. And we now basically come to the point wherein I will be summarizing the major points and highlights in this session. Um, so this session and this group of people is very interesting because they are able to provide us with relevant researches uh, in the field of education. So in, indeed, in the field of education, um, it's continuously evolving, being driven by the different challenges, concerns, needs, and of course, aspirations of the time. The schools remain adaptive and adaptive with the fast changing times, um, especially that we are now, okay, we are now in the now normal. It's no longer the new normal, but, you know, people are, are telling us that, no, it's the now, we are living in the now. So we teachers and enthusiasts um, concern ourselves on how to improve the curriculum delivery, of course, curriculum delivery on student services, that includes also assessment, and definitely concerning ourselves with what is being expected of us as an institution and part of the institution. All our efforts are very clearly manifested as we focus on improving policy making. So that's why some of you are telling that um, at the moment we don't have solutions, we're not able to provide solutions, but we are basically uh, moving forward by providing recommendations as a first move in creating solutions to the present constraints that we have in the education field. And of course, that includes also, um, aside from policy making, we have planning, delivery, monitoring, and evaluation of curricula, improving community relationship. That's why we're talking about linkages by equipping them through innovative mm -hmm. conduct of extension programs, as well as undertaking or understanding the plight of our students by feeling, by seeing, and by living what they are living at the moment. This all boils down to our love for education, our passion as, pro um, as professionals. And of course, we all do this um, considering the most important stakeholder that we have is basically our students. Can I get an amen to that? Or, you know, a uh, thumbs up for that, okay? So thank you, thank you very much for that. So I, I believe at this juncture, everybody deserves a big round of virtual applause 
Congratulations to our dear presenters from all over the Philippines. And we are also joined by participants coming from the different parts of the world. Now, at this point, let me thank everyone once again for your time in attending this session and making our experience in this international conference a rewarding and fulfilling one. We hope to see you again next year during the third ISEA conference. Or before we go back to the main room, may I request everyone to turn on your camera for some photo documentation. Okay, please, before we go to the main room, once again, thank you to our friends, of course, from um, Apayao State College, of course, from CBSUA, from Department of Education, Iloilo, Bulacan, Agricultural State College, Caraga State University, University of San Jose Recoletos, of course, Leyte Normal University, Romblon State University, of course, DepEd Division of Romblon, Romblon State University. Thank you very much once again for joining us this day. So I believe we are now queued to go back to our main Zoom room. Okay, another photo of from Ma'am uh, Lizelle. So Ma'am Lizelle is our very competent technical uh, committee. Okay, thank you, Ma'am. Thank you, Ma'am Lei. And of course, on my screen, I can see Azaira. Zaira is monitoring our performance for today. Thank you, Sai. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Pop. Uh, are we now queued to go back to the main Zoom? main room. Okay, thank you and see you around.